G'day folks, MBS here again. What we're going to do today is uh, remove and replace the distributor and uh, various ways to do that and various ways not to do it. All right, so uh, I'm going to take this distributor out of this engine and we're going to put it back in, okay? We're going to time it, do all that good stuff and uh, see how we go with these various, various methods. There's the clamp off, uh, yeah, pull him out. Oh, damn. What have I just done wrong? Should know, guys. I didn't time it, did I? How do I know where the rotor was pointing when I took this out? Okay. Shit happens. Has it ever happened to you? Uh, I'm sure it hasn't. The, uh, okay. In the old days, we used to pull these out and time them but we used to remember where the rotor was before we removed them, so we used to do a drawing just for the other guy that was gonna put the dizzy back in in case we didn't do it. And you just do a quick diagram, show them where the rotor was pointing, where the vacuum advance was pointing, and when they overhauled it or whoever overhauled it, we put it back in. That's the way it went back in, and the engine always started. Um, I didn't like that method. That's what I was taught, though. Uh, I changed to actually timing it before I removed it. But we didn't do that this time, did we? So how are we gonna put this back in? All right, what do we need to do? All right, pretty easy. Let's just rest that in there. We're gonna to have to put the engine on top dead center, yeah? This is the 50-50 method. There is another method you could try if you wanted to try 13 times to see if you got it right, <laughs> which is a bit ridiculous. There's 13 teeth on the gear drive on a Holden 6. Uh, we could just keep pulling out, move it one tooth, and just keep moving it one tooth at a time, putting the dizzy back in and out, in and out, in and out. And if you're unlucky, you'll get to number 13 and it'll finally start. Okay, so yeah, you take your chances. Ridiculous, don't do that. We've got a 50-50 method. Mm, I'm even dubious about that, but there may be some situations where you, okay, you haven't got the tools to pull the spark plug out to see uh, which is on compression. So you could do a 50-50 in that case. All it is is put it on top dead center, okay? It's gonna be either firing number one or it's gonna be firing number six. 50-50 chance. So we're gonna take a 50-50 and see how it goes. Hopefully I get it wrong and uh, you'll hear it backfiring or carrying on, whatever. And uh, that'll be a good example of, yeah, there's your 50-50 chance. So let me put this on top dead center. Find the mark, we've got some bolts fitted to the front of the pulley so I can turn it round easy. And here it comes up, little white mark. I'll put it on 10 degrees. Pick a number guys, one or six, what do you reckon? What do you reckon, Chris, one or six? Yeah, one, one, one? put it on one, okay. Since number one is always where we should be putting it. Let's get the dizzy locked into the camshaft, and there we go. Let's do a rough time. We're not gonna be worried about too much about the timing. I'm gonna be within five degrees, I hope, and we'll check it with the timing light to see how good I, I got it just by uh, lining the rotor up. Okay, we'll put your cap on. And like I said, I'm hoping it doesn't go, it's just to show you that uh, the 50-50 didn't work. It's like uh, the roulette wheel in it, black and red, eh? 50-50 chance you're gonna double your money? <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. It was a running engine just before I uh, started uh, videoing, so this should go, hopefully. Ignition. Do I need the start, you bastard? I've got the good shit now. Righto. Damn, I got it. I got the 50-50. Yeah, I've doubled my money. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Um, but as you see, 50-50 chance, eh? <laughs> I could have been wrong. I could have put that on uh, number six. You picked the wrong number, Chris. <laughs> Should have been six. All right. Um, 
But yeah, if you get it to 180 out and you've picked the wrong cylinder, it ain't gonna go. It's probably gonna go boof, boof out the exhaust or spit back out the carburetor. All right, so no, no, no. But what we should do now is, let's see how close I was with the timing, eh? Um, might start her up again and I'll put the timing light on it and we'll just see how close I was. Twelve degrees. Wasn't bad for just pointing the rotor at the cap, eh? Um, all right. It's a goer. Let's do uh, the timing, just looking at the points, eh? And we'll get that a little bit closer and see how close we can get it. So I'm only two degrees out. Rough timing. So now we want to try and get it a little bit better. Let's get this up here. Rock him over, put him back on its timing mark. And there is the 10. Now that's pointing on number six, so that's fine. Now we'll back it off. I probably would like to get the camera in at this stage and we'll have a look at the points themselves and we'll look at them sparking and that'll be static timing, just using your eyes and looking for a spark at the points when they crack open. Now this might be a little bit hard to see guys, uh, but I'm going to rotate it back till the points are closed. I might take this rotor off so you can see the uh, cam lobe a little bit better. Okay, you can see the points are right in the middle between two lobes. Now we're going to advance it. That's turn the distributor anti-clockwise. Oops. And then we're going to look for a spark at the points. Nope. Oh, did you hear that? That tiny little spark noise. Didn't see a spark, but uh, there's a tiny little noise. So I'll lock it up at that. Okay, well there was our 50-50. Uh, we've now timed it uh, rough. Rotor pointing straight to the uh, number one terminal. We uh, used the cracking of the points open, where in this case, the camera didn't pick it up. Uh, I'm terrible holding the camera in one hand and trying to do something. Uh, but we heard the spark, okay? Uh, so when you hear the spark or you see the spark, yeah, lock the shiver up there. Now what we're gonna do is do the whole thing again, okay? But this time, we're not doing a 50-50. We're going to pull this dizzy out and we're gonna do it the way I've always done it, okay? So we've got him out, let him hang there. Oh, it wasn't attached to your coil too good, Chris. No good. <laughs> Let's just turn this engine over. Ah, what's going on here? You got loose connections everywhere. Why don't I just turn it over by hand until we sort that problem out? So that uh, was just locked up on the stud. Gee, that engine is rather tight, eh? You got loose connections somewhere. Just doesn't want to turn it over. Well, okay, plan B. I've turned the dizzy over, uh, um, engine over, so I don't really sort of know where it is. If you've taken the dizzy out, you've got no idea, or you're coming up to a car with no dizzy in it, this is the only way you're gonna do it, okay? You're gonna take number one spark plug out. Only way, guys, rather than doing a 50-50, we're going to do, bring it back up the top dead centre and pull it back to its timing mark, but we're going to make sure we're on compression number one so that we can fit the dizzy and be 100% guaranteed that it's going to start and be timed correctly. And we're going to use the uh, test light this time and see how close we can get it. Uh, 
I think that last video I did it was pretty well spot on. But uh, we'll see how we go this time. All right, so we'll take the spark plug out. I'm going to get my finger in there. How you do this when it's in the car, guys? Uh, yeah, a bit tricky. Oh, I think it was almost pretty, pretty much there. I might have just, yeah, I was on compression then. It just pushed my finger out, so it wasn't too far off. Oh, did you hear that? Okay, that is compression. And we'll take it up to the timing mark. Now we can put the dizzy in, yeah? And we know exactly where it's got to go. Number one. So, yep. Yeah. Put your dizzy in. Make compensation that the uh, rotor is going to turn on you when you get it in. So move it back to there for a bit and then put it in. Okay, I can put it there. Back in units pointing a little bit of an angle, so I want to go one tooth over, see if we can get the vacuum unit squared up a little bit better, and that'll end up there. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're not going to tighten the distributor up too tight, but we're going to make it tight enough that you probably won't be able to move it by hand, but you'll be able to tap it with a, just a spanner. Just tap it like that, and we'll get our timing. Okay, so let's get this just a little bit tighter. A little bit more. There we go. The reason we do that is so that when you tighten the clamp down, the timing doesn't change on you. Now we'll put this lead back onto the negative side of the coil, and we might tighten that little nut down this time so that we've got good contact. All right, so I don't need the uh, points open for this. I can put everything back together because we're going to be using the test light this time. To time it, we'll put the spark plug back in and that plug was awfully black. So it's been running a bit rich. We'll take care of that in another video. Tapered seat spark plug guys, you only have to do them up to the five minute mark from 12 o'clock to uh, five past. Uh, that's how far you tight, tighten the uh, tapered plugs. Okay, now we'll get a test light. And we'll hook it up, tighten that terminal, and then we'll check the static timing. We'll set it up statically. All right, so everything's connected now. We've got ignition onto the coil. Now, for some of you guys that know a little bit about uh, voltages to your coil, you'll know that I've got 12 volts going to this coil at the moment. It's supposed to be 10 because it's got to go through a resistor. 12 volt is for electronic. Um, but yeah, the points in this won't last uh, as long as they should on 12 volts, so they'll deteriorate fairly quickly. So here we go, we're going to start tapping this distributor. until that light comes on. Oh, and there's, it's timed. Okay, ignition off please. Now we'll lock it and it should go. There you go guys, I've shown you quite a few different ways that you can get this done. Um, 13, uh, one out, out of 13, or what are they called, 13, goes at it, 50-50, um, or you get it right the first time. So uh, I prefer getting it right the first time, what do you reckon? That would be the way to go away, makes you look like you know what you're doing, that's what I reckon. <laughs> All right. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, um, that was fun doing that little segment, uh, just all the different little ways we do things, 
uh, and I'll see you in the next video. I think I'm doing a um, one on carburetor adjustment, then we're going to put a four barrel on this, do a four barrel adjustment. Uh, may even put a HEI distributor in, maybe. I don't know, depends what the owner wants to do. Might put his triples on even. So see, see what happens in the future. Catch you in another video.